sponsored by Commerce Bank. Seven-day branch banking is coming to New York. Grand opening September 14th at 55th and 6th and 94th and Broadway. I'm Melis Stockton Rossini in the 1010 Winds Newsroom. Get ready for the second coming of Air Jordan. Michael Jordan has all but confirmed his return to the NBA, but says the final decision won't come until the middle of next week. Bulls rookie Sean Lampy says go for it. I think it'll be good business for the NBA. And Marty Burns of CNNSI.com says it would be a much-needed shot in the arm for the Washington Wizards. He knows that the Wizards aren't maybe a championship-caliber team, and he said to us maybe uh, making the playoffs is a form of winning, and just like winning a championship would be. Jordan seems prepared to divest himself as part owner of the Wizards in exchange for a return to the court saying, I'm doing it for the love of the game. Alice Stockton, Rossini, 1010 Winds News. Winds News Time 831. Let's get an update now on traffic and transit sponsored by Dwayne Reed, New York's number one drugstore. We're winning out there on the roads and rails, Pretorio. Uh, another losing battle on the cross Bronx today, Judy, from about at least Bronx River Parkway down to the George Washington Bridge. Eastbound side is also very heavy off of George out to Jerome driving into the sun glare. The Major Deacon is going to be heavy coming down out of the two 30s down to Yankee Stadium and everybody and their kid brother diverted over to the sawmill Henry Hudson today so that too is very heavy from the Cross County Parkway all the way down the line to the tolls. We're also getting a report of an accident now in Westchester on Route 287 eastbound at exit 4S for southbound 87. Another collision on the Bronx River Parkway southbound at the Cross County Parkway in Yonkers. 45 minutes on the city bound GWB. 30 minutes um, I'm sorry it's 45 on the Lincoln Tunnel 25 to 30 on the GWB and about half an hour for the city bound Holland they're still working on an accident on the Jersey Turnpike eastbound Newark Bay Extension, which is hanging up that traffic en route to the Holland Tunnel as well. At the 1010 Winds Transit Desk, there are no reported delays and alternate side parkings in effect. I'm Pete Toriello. Shadow traffic on 1010 Winds. And now your exclusive 1010 Winds AccuWeather forecast. Delightful with a capital D. Here's meteorologist Elliot Abrams and this live report. Definitely. It's going to be this way all day. Sunshine, the high temperature 80. Tonight, clear and decidedly cool. Low 60 in Midtown, 52 in some suburbs. Tomorrow, another delightful day. Sunny and very nice. High 78. Then as a cold front approaches during the day Thursday, could be a brief shower. The high 76 degrees. And Friday, a decline in temperature. Partly sunny, breezy and cooler. High 68. Then Saturday, mostly sunny, breezy and cool. A delight if you like cool weather. High 68. Currently winds out of the northwest at 4 miles per hour. The relative humidity is 70%. It's 64 degrees in Paramus. 66 degrees in Newark. 67 in Midtown and heading to 80. Thank you, Weather Watch never stops. I'm meteorologist Elliot Abrams on New York's weather station, 1010 Winds. Winds News Time, 833. To celebrate the second anniversary of our Dollar Rewards Club, Dwayne Reed is offering extra bonus discounts. Yeah, that's right. Spend $75 or more during September. And depending on how much, you'll get coupons for 5 to 20% off your next purchase. And don't forget to get yourself some Marcal paper towels. You'll find them in colorful new print designs that are quilted for a softer feel. And you know what? They're even more absorbent than ever. With your Dollar Rewards Club card, they're just 66 cents a roll. That's a great price. Get some Marcal soft pack two-ply bathroom tissue, too. It's the bathroom tissue that's quilted for a softer, more absorbent feel. It's now just 99 cents, and that's another great price at Dwayne Reed, New York's number one drugstore. News Time 834. There's a scramble to recall some books handed out to New York City schools as part of a third grade reading program and paid for by Mayor Giuliani's Classroom Library Initiative. Included in the readings is a poetry collection by Maya Angelou called I Shall Not Be Moved that has uh, apparently been a poem about childhood incest. Shocked teachers and parents immediately alerted the Board of Ed and the recall is underway. Columbia University professor Lucky Calkins, who compiled the reading list, is taking blame for the mistake. She says there was a clerical error. What was intended Ended was a work called We Shall Not Be Moved, about uh, that's uh, rather by Joan Dash, about a 1909 women's factory strike. More charges have been brought against jailed Waterbury Mayor Philip Giordano. Waterbury Prosecutor John Connolly says the charges are in addition to the federal prosecution, and they accuse Giordano of sexually assaulting two children. Their case is a political corruption case. Our case is sexual assault of two young girls. Uh, yeah, they're different investigations because we're looking at different things. 
Philip Giordano continues to be held without bail on federal charges involving sexual activity with a minor. He's expected to face arraignment later this week on the state charges. Winds News Time 835. Pioneer Food Stores is celebrating its 57th year of serving your community and wants to continue to be your supermarket. Catering to you and your family's needs is something they specialize in. The employees at Pioneer pride themselves with the best quality, freshness, lowest prices, and most outstanding customer service in the entire metropolitan area. For your family gatherings, parties, or any occasion, let them help you. To help celebrate 57 years in your community, check out some of this week's specials. Wesson Oil, one gallon container, $2.99 with coupon, a savings of $3. Scott Tissue, wider assorted colors, 1,000 count, four rolls for $1.99 with coupon. Hunt's Tomato Sauce, five ounce cans for $1 with coupon. And Turkey Hill Ice Cream, all varieties, half gallon container, just $2.49 with coupon. You'll find these great items and many more on sale at over 50 Pioneer Food Stores, conveniently located in your neighborhood. Pioneer, owners that care. Winch News, Tommy 36. Everyone is interested in something from yoga to Yugoslavia, Brad Pitt to biology. And at Content Store, Contentville.com, you can get everything about anything at great prices. With Contentville's cross-content search, you'll find books, magazines, articles, dissertations, and more on whatever interests you, all with the click of a mouse. All items are downloadable or shipped to you within 48 hours. Contentville offers magazine subscriptions with fast first issue delivery. Order a subscription today from Contentville's selection of over 800 titles, and your first issue will be in the mail to you within 48 hours, not 48 days. And Contentville sells magazine subscriptions at the lowest authorized price on the web. Go to Contentville now and save 90% off the cover price of New York Magazine, 74% off 17, or choose from many other great offers. So visit Contentville.com today. That's C-O-N-T-E-N-T V-I-L-L-E dot com to find everything about anything at great prices. Wednesday News Time 837. The 210th edition of the Old Farmer's Almanac hits newsstands today. There are the usual weather predictions as we hear from correspondent David Terrell. You might think Old Farmer's Almanac editor-in-chief Judd Hale would be bragging about hitting many of last year's weather forecasts. But he says he's worried because some predictions were way above the traditional 80% accuracy rate. He's concerned they've set a bad precedent. The Almanac's 210th edition calls for a mostly mild winter except for a very cold January. Believers will look for more snow than normal in the Pacific Northwest, from Denver to Iowa, the northern Great Lakes, New England, and the Texas Panhandle. Summer drought is possible across the Tennessee Valley into the Smokies and Appalachians and from Virginia to southern New England. Wins News, time 838, time for 1010 Wins Entertainment News. It's taken some time, but a big player on the small screen could have his story told in Tinseltown. Here's Sandy Kenyon. His Confessions of a Dangerous Mind could finally be made into a movie years after Chuck Barris wrote his autobiography. The creator of The Gong Show and The Dating Game will likely get to appear in a cameo role under the direction of George Clooney, who's also the star of the picture. There's word Nicole Kidman has joined the cast. Shooting is set to get underway this month. Next, a new series set in the world of NASA and its astronaut training program is in development for ABC. Variety says the drama will focus on the tension and conflict that occurs when hotshot pilots encounter a very political bureaucracy. It's being billed as a cross between the West Wing and Top Gun with a dash of the right stuff. Finally, are you ready to feed your kids Simpsons cereal in the morning? One kind will be named after Homer, the other after his son Bart. I'm Sandy Kenyon for 1010 Win. You can hear entertainment news at 38 minutes past every hour on 1010 Wins. Wins news time, 839. In 1990, more than 2,200 people were murdered in New York City. Gunfire became such a common part of life that some mothers were putting their kids to bed in bathtubs to keep them safe from being shot. The men and women of the NYPD have put their lives on the line, ran toward those gunshots, and took our streets back from the criminals. New York is the safest large city in America, and the NYPD is the most respected law enforcement organization in the world. I'm Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick. Whether it's solving the Wendy's massacre in less than 36 hours or pulling five kids out of a hole in a frozen pond, New York City cops are asked every day to overcome challenges that are unimaginable to the average person. If you're inspired by these stories and you want to change your life or the lives of others, I'm offering you a career. Make no mistake, we're not talking about a quiet 9 to 5 job. I'm talking about a career of heroism and public service. If you think you have what it takes to join us, call 212 Recruit and get an application for our next exam. It's not just a job, it's the NYPD. 
More people wake up to 1010 wins every morning than do any other station in the nation. Tom Offer is our writer. I'm Judy DeAngelis. All news, all the time. This is 1010 Wins. You give us 22 minutes, we'll give you the world. Good morning, 64 degrees at 840 on this Tuesday, September 11th. I'm James Faraday, and here's what's happening. Thousands of New Yorkers will head to the polls today to cast ballots for mayor and a host of other city offices on primary day. Catholic high school teachers in the city and the suburbs reportedly walk off the job. A former city school teacher is accused of a 30-year-old hijacking. Easy pass battery problems lead to fines for unsuspecting drivers. This is AccuWeather Meteorologist Elliot Abrams. Well, plenty of sunshine today. Lower humidity than recently. The high 80 dropping to 60 tonight. Up to 78 with sunshine tomorrow. 76 Thursday. This is Steve Torrey. It appears Michael Jordan will indeed be coming out of retirement to return to play to the NBA. Giants lose the opener, falling in the Monday night game at Denver. Yankees and Red Sox rained out of the stadium. I'm Steve Orr. Nokia issues a revenue warning. Neiman Marcus and Heinz match quarterly profit estimates. And Goldman Sachs gets an upgrade. Wins News Time 841. Traffic and transit on the ones. Sponsored by John Leguizamo's Sexaholic at the Royal Theater. Here's Pete Torriello. Grabbing the Jersey Jams for you here. First of all, in Whippany, Route 10 is now open in both directions through Parsippany Road. An accident investigation finally cleared. Eastbound 80 is very heavy from exit 26 in Netcong down to 43 and uh, that's Route 287 in Parsippany then backed up again approaching Route 280. We do have pr uh, trouble on 280 itself. Eastbound side is tied up out of Route 80 all the way down to exit 4 in Roseland with an accident in the right lane westbound side approaching exit 4. Another accident blocking the left lane in North Bergen. Northbound 19 that's Tunley Avenue is still shut down following a road collapse between 83 3rd and 89th Streets, and on the New Jersey Turnpike, they're working on an accident on the eastbound Newark Bay Extension near 14A in Bayonne. That has the Turnpike northbound truck and car lanes backed up all the way to Interchange 12 and Carteret. 45 minutes on the city-bound Lincoln Tunnel, 30 minutes at the GWB and the Holland Tunnel. Over on the Major Deegan, we're still very heavy from the 230s down to Yankee Stadium. A lot of alternate traffic coming down the southbound Sawmill Henry-Hudson combo this morning. More shadow traffic in 10 minutes on 1010 Winds. Winds News Time, 842. It's primary day in New York. Thousands of voters across the city are off to the polls today to cast ballots in a host of races, from mayor, public advocate, and controller down to city council. Much attention, of course, is focused on the Democratic mayoral primary. 1010 Wins newsman John Montone is with candidate Mark Green. Mark Green beamed as he voted with his wife and daughter while his 17-year-old son saved dad's big day on videotape. Then the candidate spoke. This is the first new election for a new mayor in this, this decade for our city, and we're on the brink of history. I think this is my moment, but I'm very content to let it be up to the verdict of voters today. Polls say those voters will give Green enough votes to put him in a runoff with Fernando Ferrer. Green's own poll seems to indicate the same thing, but one staffer said getting the 40% needed to avoid a runoff is not out of the question. John Montone, 10 10 wins on the Upper East Side. And don't forget, special primary coverage begins when the polls close tonight at 9 here on 1010 Wins. Wins News Time 843. There's a report of a strike this morning by lay teachers at Catholic high schools in the city and suburbs. But a spokesman for the Archdiocese says it's not clear if that strike extends to all 10 of its high schools. The teachers' union, which represents about 300 educators, is demanding higher salaries, and they've set up pickets at the high schools this morning. No contract talks are scheduled. The Archdiocese has said that classes would be held in the event of a strike. Wins News Time 844. Now a commercial message. The maniacal genius of John Leguizamo. Back on Broadway in Sexaholics. My parents used to give me the Latino for Dummies story of Latin history. Not even the Discovery Channel knows our story. <laughs> My mother would always be telling us, Back in ancient Spain, Leguizamo meant chamber pot emptier. <laughs> And my father would be like, well, John, let me tell you about your mother, people. Brown, naked, coked up savages. <laughs> my first glimpse into dysfunctional white relationships was cool because I was about nine years old. And my parents just sent me the Fresh Air Fund. Did anybody know what that is? That's where they take an inner city kid and send him to a rich white family for two weeks out in the suburbs. <laughs> and just when you're getting comfortable, three meals a day, <laughs> lead-free paint chips. <laughs> They snatch it all away. <laughs> so if you know how poor you were, now your <laughs> really knows. John Leguizamo's Sexaholics at the Royale Theater. Call Telecharge 212-239-6200. 
1010 Winds Accu Weather, plenty of sunshine, breezy and pleasant today, the high 80. Tonight will be clear and cool with a low of 60 in Midtown, but down to 52 in some suburbs. Right now, 64 degrees and sunny in New York. Winds News Time 845, time for 1010 Winds Sports with Steve Torrey. He's been planning for and working hard towards another comeback, and now it does appear the twice-retired Michael Jordan will be turning to the NBA again, this time as a member of the Washington Wizards. Michael now 38, dropped some big hints yesterday, all but confirming his return turn saying, quote, I'm doing it for the love of the game. No official announcement, but one is expected sometime next week. So unless something drastic happens, like perhaps an injury, look for Michael to make his return October 30th, opening night of the NBA, Madison Square Garden against the Knicks. Now, they were much more respectable than the Jets, but that wasn't too hard to do. Came down to the Giants' inability to control Brian Greasy. Too many blown coverages for the Big Blue secondary. Giants dropped their opener in Monday Night Football, falling to the Broncos in Denver's new Invesco field at mile high, 31-20. to Kerry Collins is pretty good start, bad finish. We came out playing hard, and uh, we uh, didn't let the noise or any, you know, the environment get to us. We came out in the second half, did exactly what we wanted to do, and uh, put up a touchdown on the opening drive. And you know, From then on, you know, we just uh, we never got it going. Yeah, this was a 14-14 game midway through the third, where the Broncos then scored 17 unanswered and put it away. Greasy burned them for 330 yards, passing three touchdowns, including one to ex-giant Ed McCaffrey, who suffered a broken leg in the third quarter. He'll miss the rest of the season. Terrell Davis, 102 yards on the ground. As for Collins, threw for 258 yards, three scores, two of those to Amani Toomer. Giants will host the Packers Sunday. Yankees and Red Sox rained out of the stadium last night. Roger Clemens will try again tonight for win number 20 and also try to become the first ever pitcher to win 20 of his first 21 decisions. He'll start up against the White Sox tonight. Paul O'Neill, a stress fracture in his left foot. He's expected to miss at least 7 to 10 days. Oakland won their 8th straight last night, beating Texas. They now have an 11-game lead in the wild card race. And Seattle's magic number to clinch the West down to 2 following a win over Anaheim. Mets would last night off begin a series tonight in Pittsburgh against the Pirates with 18 to go. Mets are eight back of the Braves. And the Mets minor league single-A team Brooklyn Cyclones beat Williamsport last night 7-4 to take that first game of the best of three New York Penn League Championship Series. Sports at 15 and 45 around the clock and any time on the web at 1010wins.com. Steve Torrey, 1010 Win Sports. Wins News Time 847. What racing fan hasn't yearned to be behind the wheel of the race car, feeling the surge of power in second, the utter command of the road? Aficionados once confined to the sidelines may now take a front seat behind the wheel of the Audi S4 with its riveting 250 horsepower bi-turbo V6. The S4 Avant, same powerhouse engine, plus 64 cubic feet of space in the rear. And the ultimate, the all-aluminum S8 with a 360 horsepower four Valve V8. All three equipped with Audi's legendary Quattro all-wheel drive. See what Audi's enduring racing heritage can bring to a road near you. The Audi S-Line. Yield to no one. Test drive the 250 horsepower bi-turbo blistering fast Audi S4 at your tri-state area Audi dealer today. Celebrate Audi's Le Mans victory with exceptional lease rates in all race bred S4 models. It's 64 degrees and sunny in New York going up to a sunny 80 today in Midtown. Wins news time 848. You wouldn't buy an overpriced car. Why buy overpriced car insurance? One 15-minute call to Geico could save you 15% or more. Call 1-800-947-AUTO. That's 1-800-947-AUTO. Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. For breaking news now, AccuWeather and the exclusive outlet for the Fox News Channel. It's 1010 Wins. Lock it in. 1010 Wins News. A former New York City school teacher appeared before a federal judge in Manhattan yesterday, accused of being a fugitive hijacker and bank robber as part of a black radical group. 54-year-old Patrick Critton was arrested at his Mount Vernon home after three decades on the run. Authorities say they were led to Critton after his fingerprints on file with the Board of Ed matched those on a 30-year-old arrest warrant. Sources tell the New York Post that Critton confessed to the 1971 hijacking of an Air Canada jetliner to Cuba, a Manhattan bank robbery in which a robber was shot to death, and two other heists. Wins News Time 849. Truce talks between Israel and the Palestinians will not be held today as scheduled. They were put off in a dispute over where to hold the talks and after Israeli troops today fired in the West Bank town of Jenin. Seven Palestinians were injured. Israel says the town was the staging ground for Palestinian terrorist attacks. A rally in support of Israel is being planned for later this month in Manhattan. The Solidarity Rally in New York City in support of Israel is a crucial undertaking, according to Senator Charles Schumer. Every so often... We are called upon 
to rise to the occasion because our brethren in Israel are in crisis. This is one of those times. The rally will feature both New York Senators Governor Pataki, Nobel Peace Prize winner Elie Wiesel, and Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. Organizers hope that 50,000 Jews and supporters of Israel will turn out. Mona Rivera, 1010, Wins News. Wins News time 850. A major player on Wall Street is hit with a sex bias case. The story from 1010 Wins Senior Correspondent Stan Brooks. The federal suit charges that Morgan Stanley discriminates against women employees in promotion, pay, and other benefits. And even EEOC chairwoman Carrie Dominguez says when one of the women, Allison Shefflin, objected to this treatment, Morgan Stanley retaliated against her by firing her. To complain equates to... Breaking news now on 1010 Wins. This just into our newsroom, a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. Let's get this live update from 1010 Winds correspondent Joan Fleischer. Joan, what do you see? Well, I'm standing on the top of my roof, and I'm looking at the World Trade Center, and there's a huge hole in it, and there's a fire in the building right now. Huge smoke pouring out of it, and things are falling from the building itself. It's about three quarters from the top, oh, well, maybe a quarter from the top of the building where it's complete. Well, there's a huge hole in the building. All right, 1010 Winds correspondent Joan Fleischer on the scene in lower Manhattan. Uh, any emergency personnel on the scene as of yet, Joan, that you see? I can't see anybody, but I hear the fire trucks, and um, it, I, heard the, I heard the plane very close to the top of the buildings. I looked outside, and I saw a hit, and it exploded immediately. Did you uh, manage to see what kind of plane it was? I couldn't tell. It, it was a smaller plane. It looked like a smaller plane, but I couldn't tell. Not, uh, I'm not really sure. I uh, would say it wasn't a huge jet, but it was a plane that sounded like it was a fighter jet overhead, and then I saw it explode. It was too close to the building. Are you able to see any wreckage on the ground from where you're no, standing? No, I'm too far. I'm too high up. No, I can't see anything other than there's a huge hole in the side of the building and a fire inside. Tons of smoke pouring out. I can hear from the fire trucks that there's a lot of uh, fire personnel and police personnel over there. And I can see things in the sky that look like, I don't know if it came out of the other side of the building. I really don't know um, where it landed, but it's a huge fire now in the, in the World Trade Center. Apparently, that is towards the top of the building. Yes. This would be uh, the uh, this would be the World Trade Center building that has the uh, television and radio antenna at the top. Correct, correct. And uh, we can see via television pictures uh, large plumes of black smoke, as you mentioned, and uh, it seems to be concentrated at the top of the building, correct? Correct, correct. Yes. I mean, I can't see anybody up there yet. It doesn't seem like personnel got over there at all on top yet. I don't see anybody on the top of any of the buildings, and the building behind it is completely obscured by smoke. Okay, and, and what is your uh, vantage right now? I'm looking right at it. I'm on North Moore Street on my roof. I can see it perfectly. I can see the flame inside. I see where it hit, so the plane hit on my side. There is a gaping hole, and that, uh, that appears to be on the north side of the building? Yes, that's correct. It's huge. It, it, it looks like the, uh, the, the hole covers uh, a number of floors... Yes. It's difficult to tell just how many, but uh, uh, as you've mentioned, uh, there is that uh, thick black smoke now emanating from the building. And uh, apparently we're getting reports of uh, debris falling to the street below. Right. That's what I can see, but I can't really see what it is. I'm too far. But there's, there, when I first came upstairs and called you, I realized that there were things falling from the building. But I can't tell what size it is. It's just in the air. And as you can probably hear, there's tons of fire trucks rushing to the scene. Now, uh, this happened uh, about, about what time this morning, oh, John? I'm telling you, it happened maybe 10 minutes ago. I called immediately because I heard the plane overhead. I looked out of my window and I said, that's so close. And then it exploded. And I came up to the roof and I can see it perfectly well. So the, the plane was, uh, uh, did it appear to be having any trouble? Yeah, it was, it was on the side. It wasn't straight, going straight. It was on the side and very close to the building. It's like right overhead. And it was unusual to me. And then I heard the explosion. I came upstairs and I see it went right into the building. I imagine the, the, the force of the explosion probably uh, uh, shook the building and uh, I, was heard for many blocks around. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I heard the plane being overhead, and there's a lot of people on the roofs nearby. 
uh, that are looking also, they heard the same thing. Because it was really close. I mean, I've never heard any a plane that close over here. And uh, it was it was about, it almost hit one of the residential buildings, but now it definitely hit the World Trade Center. It was that close. And uh, it looks like a, a direct hit from where you're standing? Yes. Oh, de it definitely. That's where it hit. It was no, no doubt about it. It's a direct hit. It went right through. I don't know if it came out the other side or what happened, but there's a, there's a fire in there. And as far as I can see right now, no one has approached the area yet uh, in terms of the, in the World Trade Center. Lots of thick black smoke coming from the top of the World Trade Center. Uh, it looks like the plane struck about um, three quarters of the way up, maybe a little higher. Yeah. I can't tell the floors from here, but it's, it's towards the top. But it was so close to the buildings, and the buildings around here are relatively low, except for you know, World Trade Center and a few others. And it was so close to the residential buildings, and it just crashed right into the World Trade Center. If you're just tuning in, breaking news here on 1010 Winds, a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. Uh, this happening just a matter of minutes ago. Uh, an aircraft, uh, we're not sure of the, the make of the aircraft, uh, apparently a direct hit into one of the Twin Towers. And there are uh, there's a large plume of black smoke now emanating from one of the towers, almost all the way towards the top of the tower. 1010 right. Winds correspondent Joan Fleischer is with us. And that uh, that smoke appears to be going straight up, and uh, it appear, there appears to be more of it by the minute. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, all, it's, it's completely covering the top of the second building. And this one is very dark. I can see the flames from where I am right now, inside of the building. We should point out that uh, the building affected is the one with the television and radio Correct. antenna at the top. Correct. Not the one with the observation deck. That, I think, is true. But I, I can tell you, this. I believe this is the building with the... Uh, it's hard to tell from my vantage point, but it's the north building, and I think that's the one with the antenna on it. And there is, as we mentioned, this huge gaping hole now. Oh, unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this in my life. To actually see a plane, look outside, hear the plane close, and then see the explosion, and then look at the World Trade Center and see a huge hole. The plane wasn't flying straight. It was on its side. It was tipping. It was going south, tipped to the left. So it looked like it was, I don't know, I don't look like there was trouble before they crashed. You say the plane was headed south at the time? Yes. It looked like it was headed south towards, it was right over the buildings going south, down, going further downtown, but it was tipped to the left, so the right wing was up. So it looked like there might have been problems before they actually crashed. There is that huge gaping hole on the north side, the apparent location of the impact, and uh, but also the uh, the smoke is now emanating from other sides of the building as well. Yes, I see that. That's why I don't. I can't tell you what's on the south side of the building. Whether the plane actually went right through, I cannot tell you that. I can't see it. But there's still some debris falling from the building itself. Have they been able to secure the area as of yet, or they're still, it sounds like they're still arriving on the scene? Yeah, I think they're still arriving, and I can't see. I'm, I can only see the top where the plane hit. I can't see what's going on on the ground, other than there are uh, many uh, planes in uh, above, above the building right now, helicopters circling. So I guess they'll have a better report than from, to see from all vantage points than I can. Of course, as this happened just a matter of minutes ago, it's uh, impossible to give you any word uh, about uh, casualties at this point. Yeah, I have no idea. I can't imagine. Uh, I can't imagine what the inside of that building looks like. Or, you know, hopefully there weren't people in there. But I really can't tell you that right now. All I can see is a, a fire inside the building now, and thick, thick smoke coming out of the, the hole and on top of the building, and what seems like behind the building. And we're getting reports that that smoke can be seen for literally for miles around at this point. It was, it was the, it, the explosion itself was unbelievable. The, hear, sound, the sound of the plane so close and then the hit was uh, uh, unbelievable. And you were getting ready to start your day at the time this happened, right? Yes, I was starting my day. My day had started and then I heard this plane and looked out of my window and then saw that it was on its side and then heard the crash. And came, it's, it's, uh, yes, debris is still coming out of the building. Seems like quite a bit right now. And, and what did it sound like when the plane hit the building? It was an explosion. Like you, I, I can't explain it. I can't, you know, relate it to anything else I've ever heard in my life other than it was a direct hit. It's like, you know, when you're a witness to a car accident, you know the hit, the sound of the hit, because you've heard it before. This was like nothing else. Um, it 
beeped and just a huge burst of flame. As soon as it went in, and, it's, and now we have planes circling overhead, but I don't know. Helicopters overhead, but I don't know what they're... The fire trucks and police trucks are still arriving. I can hear them. You're listening to live continuous coverage of a plane crash into the World Trade Center this morning. This is 1010 Winds WINS New York. I'm James Faraday. Now for more on the story, 1010 Winds newsman Lee Harris. Good morning, and it is not a good morning in New York City. A major disaster, a plane crash into the World Trade Center. We're on the line with 1010 Winds account executive Joan Fleischer, a witness to this terrible unfolding scene. Joan, could you maybe just recap for those just joining us uh, what what happened and what you're seeing? Well, shortly, I, I think it must have been 15, 20 minutes ago, I heard a plane overhead that seemed awfully close. And, you know, usually you don't hear them over here, and it was very close. And I looked out of the window and saw a plane, what seemed to be heading for buildings, because it seemed to be too low. It was, it was, it was hardly uh, higher than some of the, the residential buildings around here. And as I was looking, the plane was dipped to the left, and the right side of the plane, heading south, was hiding, was heading to the top. And then the next thing I know, I saw um, the plane crash. I came up to the roof, and I can now see where the hole in the World Trade Center is. And it is an enormous hole. Joan, enormous. Any, any, any sense at all as to the size of the plane? We've been getting conflicting reports that it was a small plane, even that it might have been a passenger airliner, a 737. See, I think it was smaller. As I said before, I, I'm not that familiar, and it was, you know, it's still over my head. I couldn't tell. It wasn't, it didn't seem like it was a tiny plane. You know, it didn't seem seemed like it might have been a four-passenger or anything like that. It seemed larger than that. But, again, I can't be sure. It, do, it did not seem like a jet. All right, John, I want you to stick with us for just a moment. We're okay. going to get a report of traffic and transit in the, on the ones. Obviously, there are traffic problems resulting from this major disaster. Pete Torello? That's right, Lee. Anything uh, going into the World Trade Center, is it going to be closing down for only the passes of emergency apparatus? And, of course, anything coming into lower Manhattan is also probably going to be off limits to you or should be at this point because we need as much room as possible to get all of the emergency equipment to the World Trade Center. Keep your radio locked into 1010 Winds. We'll have more on this horrible story coming up. Right now, we are looking at about 45 minutes on the city-bound Lincoln Tunnel, 30 minutes on the Holland, 30 minutes on the George Washington Bridge. Cross Bronx is also very heavy from the Bronx River Parkway all the way into the Jersey-bound upper level of the GWB as that phase of construction work continues. I'm Pete Torriello, Shadow Traffic on 1010 Winds. Winds News Time 902. We've been talking with Joan Fleischer, an account executive at 1010 Winds. Right now, we're going to switch over to Kai Kendall. He saw the whole thing transpire from his vantage point on 14. 14th Street, and again, we're talking about a plane crash into the World Trade Center. Kai, what did you see, and what can you see now? Uh, well, I saw the, the plane come overhead. I happened to be looking south towards the World Trade Center. There is now another explosion occurring right at this moment in the other building, which means debris has come from it the It appears airplane. another plane yep. just flew into no, the other another tower. plane. It looks like debris from the plane, which may have hit the other building. There is an explosion at any rate in the other uh, building about uh, 50 feet down uh, as I'm looking south to the left. Um, the plane was a larger plane. It didn't look as large as a passenger plane, but it did look like a four-engine uh, jet aircraft. Uh, to my eyes, uh, it could have avoided the building. It looked almost as if the pilot was trimming the rudder in order to hit the building. But that's are, are you certain that you did not just now see a second plane hit the other building? I, I, from my vantage point, I didn't see a plane hit the building, but I did see an explosion occur, and there's a lot of flame as opposed to the other, uh, uh, the other time. My God, I can't believe it. When the first plane hit, I did not hear an explosion, even though I was looking at it. It went clear into the building. Uh, the explosion in the fire started after impact. Uh, this is something that looks more like an explosion immediately at the corner of the building. Uh, I guess it would be the uh, east tower of the World Trade Center. All right, Kai, we're going to switch over to 1010 Winds reporter Steve Kastenbaum. Steve, what's the latest from your vantage point? Well, I am in my uh, apartment in Lower Brooklyn, and uh, I can have a, I have a clear view of the World Trade Center, 
and what I am looking at is a horrific sight. Both buildings of the World Trade Center are definitely on fire. There is uh, black smoke coming from both of the towers. Uh, it's uh, a horrific scene here. There's um, debris flying through the air over the East River here into Brooklyn. Uh, what appears to be paper, this is obviously a, a horrible disaster. Um, it had to have been at least one plane, possibly two. Uh, the, um, the, the fires in the two buildings are at separate levels. One of the towers, uh, it appears the smoke is coming from about halfway up. And in the other tower, the smoke is coming from about two-thirds of the way up in the building. It is drifting over Brooklyn, heading south. I uh, did not see the plane crash, but at about five uh, minutes ago, not even, I did hear a large explosion, and the ground here in Brooklyn shook. My windows rattled, so there was definitely at least another explosion. I can't confirm whether or not it was a second plane, but a, a horrific disaster. I am staring at this in, in total disbelief right now. I can't believe what I am seeing here right now. Well, what you are seeing is both towers of the World Trade Center on fire. One apparently due to a plane crash. The second also possibly due to a plane crash, but that is unclear at this point. Absolutely, Lee. And again, what I can also see, paper floating through the air a couple of hundred feet above uh, Brooklyn right now in uh, uh, downtown Brooklyn. And it appears to be drifting over from the World Trade Center from these explosions. Not clear uh, what the debris is, whether it came from the plane or whether it's coming from inside the offices at the World Trade Center. But a, a terrible, frightening sight here. All right, Steve, you're in Brooklyn. We're going to switch back to lower Manhattan and 1010 Wins Account Executive Joan Fleischer. Joan, were you able to see what happened to the second building? Yes, all of a sudden there was just a big explosion that sort of mushroomed into the air now um, on several several floors below the initial impact of the first plane the plane is a fire in the second building now not the same floor um, and I don't see where another plane could have hit from here. I well, on TV, they just showed videotape of what appeared to be a second plane ah. flying into the second tower. Wow. And that appeared to be a passenger jet, or at least something the size of a passenger jet. Wow. The first one I saw, and the only one I saw, was the one that went into the building that I'm looking at, right, that I can see with the antenna on it. That's where there's a hole. The second building... They just, they just played the tape again. It is horrific. A uh, second plane the size of a passenger jet flying into the second tower of the, of the World Trade Center. Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. You can't... I've never... I've never seen anything like it. The smoke is so thick. There's still debris falling. Uh, I can't see from my vantage point where a second plane could have hit, but it might have hit on another in another direction. It doesn't well, seem I'm, to I'm afraid we'll be seeing it for quite some time to come. We have no idea, of course, of the casualties at this point, oh. but there's obviously enormous loss of life. The fire keeps growing, the smoke keeps billowing, right. and this is a, a horrible tragedy unfolding in New York City on this what was a bright sunny morning uh joan obviously the situation has been growing worse as, as you've been watching it uh, how much worse does it appear to be than uh, initially well initially it was that one building that looked like it was on fire now there's a a, a, a big fire on the second building the other one seems to be the fire seems to be in, inside the building this one is on the outside i can see it very clearly from here and the smoke is billowing out of both buildings now and it's heading towards Brooklyn. It's, it's unbelievable. Thick black smoke. Recapping, in case you're just joining us and wondering what is going on, it is beyond belief. Both towers of the World Trade Center are burning. Both have apparently been hit by aircraft. Uh, we're still unclear on the case of the second tower. The first definitely was. And television has been showing a videotape of a second plane, apparently the size of a twin-engine passenger jet, crashing into the second tower. Wow. And uh, obviously uh, we have uh, enormous loss of life. We can't confirm that, but just by looking at it, if people uh, who were on those floors that were hit survived, it, uh, it will be miraculous. All of our reporters are en route to the scene. Obviously, uh, it will do you no good to go anywhere near the vicinity of the World Trade Center. Please allow the uh, emergency crews, and many will be needed to, to get in there. And uh, unfortunately, this is making the bombing of the World Trade Center look like a relatively minor incident. Now, the smoke is blowing toward Brooklyn. Is, is that your uh, 
your view, Joan? Yes, it definitely is. It's so thick, thicker by the minute, and the tops of the buildings are hard to see right now. Thick black smoke coming from both buildings. And the top of the building, the one that has the uh, television and radio an antenna, yes. that's being almost completely obscured by, by smoke at this point. The uh, fire and the point of impact on the second building is a, is a bit lower down. Right. Uh, on the first building, almost uh, at the top, uh, the second about two-thirds of the way up. And uh, there, there is a gaping hole in the side of the uh, of the one building we can we can see, and uh, no doubt there is one to match on the other building as well. Wow! It's, I haven't seen the other one, like I said, but this one is uh, unbelievable. And there are people at higher vantage points that can see more. I see them on the top, and they're see, looking. CNN has top. just has just <laughs> rerun uh, from a different angle the videotape of the second plane hitting the second building, causing a massive explosion. Uh, apparently, the plane coming in uh, from over the Hudson River from the west and, uh, and slamming into that building. It's just beyond belief. Unbelievable. It's uh, Wins News Time, 9-11, uh, the World Trade Center. Both buildings have uh, been hit by planes. We're going to get a check of traffic and transit on the ones. Here's Pete Torriello. Ed, needless to say, going into lower Manhattan is just forget about it. We have, uh, as you heard on 1010 Winds, two separate plane crashes hitting each tower of the World Trade Center. We need uh, to clear as many roads as possible to get the emergency apparatus in and out of the area. Meanwhile, we are looking at delays now on the city-bound Lincoln Tunnel. We're running about 45 minutes. We're going to be running extensive delays, no doubt, on the inbound Holland Tunnel because, as you know, of course, that's going to bring you right into lower Manhattan. George Washington Bridge is running about a 30-minute delay. And, of of course, uh, this very clearly visible from any of the bridges, uh, especially up along the uh, lower end of the East River. That's going to cause delays there, too. But again, I cannot say this strongly enough. You do not want to be coming into lower Manhattan today. We have, uh, at the moment, uh, we're trying to get some information to see if any mass transit operations have been disrupted. And we'll have more coming up shortly on 1010 Winds. Winds News Time, 912, a major disaster in New York City this morning. Breaking news now on 1010 Winds. Both towers of the World Trade Center have have been hit by aircraft. Both are in flames. Both uh, suffered explosions. We we're trying to get our reporters to the scene. Of course, uh, there is no doubt uh, confusion and chaos on the ground and major rescue efforts underway. On the 1010 Winds Newsmaker line with us this morning, Joan Fleischer, an account executive at 1010 Winds, who was and is a witness to the scene that has been unfolding here this morning. Uh, Joan, beyond the building, do you have any, uh, any view of any activity? I can't see anything beyond the buildings, but the smoke, I can smell it here now. It's completely um, covered the area. We have people up here taking pictures because it's like nothing you've ever seen before. I can't see anything on the south side of the buildings. I can only see what looks north. No, nothing we've ever seen before and uh, nothing we ever wanted to see and nothing hopefully Absolutely. we will ever see again. Again, we've, we've had no information yet on casualties. All of this has unfolded really in the last uh, 20 minutes or so. But looking at the building, it is fairly obvious that uh, barring some miracle, there has been massive loss of life in uh, New York City this morning. And again, comparing it to the World Trade Center bombing, uh, it is obvious that uh, that was a relatively minor incident. We're going to switch over to 1010 Wins reporter Larry Kofsky, who left his post at uh, the New York Stock Exchange to head over to the scene of the disaster. Larry, what's the situation? Well, it didn't take more than a minute to uh, smell the uh, the scent uh, of burning materials as I walked out of the New York Stock Exchange, which is maybe four or five blocks from the World Trade Center. And uh, as I walked out, there was uh, clearly smoke pouring out of the building. I'm already several blocks away. I'm down on Water Street. And uh, as I was approaching the World Trade Center, there was a second explosion of some sort. And uh, I actually got pushed over and was trampled twice as uh, more debris came pouring from the building. And as I saw it, it looked like about the upper quarter of the building. Uh, there was clearly damage and uh, glass blown out, and there's deb uh, debris flying through the sky. I walked about five blocks, and I'm covered with uh, shreds of paper and uh, things that have, uh, have gone flying from the building. So uh, there's a, a great deal of panic, a ton of gridlock down here. Uh, 
there's uh, there, there are cars all over, and, and nobody's really moving anywhere. So uh, if, if it, don't don't even think don't even think about coming down here because it's uh, it's a mess. Well, we know that the second explosion, as we've seen on television with a, a, a horrific videotape played over and over again, the uh, second tower was hit by a plane the size of a passenger airliner. We don't know if that was an occupied uh, plane occupied with passengers or some kind of pilot on a kamikaze mission, but in any event, that was the cause of that second explosion. Uh, down on the ground, Larry, you mentioned that uh, obviously there are people jammed in the vicinity, but uh, what's the what's the sense of what's going on? Well, I saw a lot of people crying. Uh, the further I got away from it, clearer the calmer people were. They did evacuate the New York Stock Exchange. I can't even get back to my post at this point. Uh, and uh, basically, just looking uh, outside the, uh, the store, I finally managed to borrow a phone because uh, my cell phone was certainly not working. Uh, there are people, they seem to be walking calmly down the sidewalks, although I really don't know where they're, where they're headed at this point. But uh, as I said, when, uh, when that second explosion uh, hit the World Trade Center, uh, it was pandemonium. There were uh, people uh, just, just running as fast as they could. Those who couldn't run as fast, who ran faster than I could were uh, pushing me over. I was down on the ground twice, uh, and I did see a couple people get hurt, although uh, I didn't see anybody uh, seriously injured as people uh, ran as fast and as far as they could from the building. Well, it's a classic example of a situation that you thought couldn't possibly get any worse, uh, getting substantially worse and in just a matter of moments. The initial report uh, around 10 to 9 this morning of a plane crashing into uh, the first of the World uh, Trade Center towers. And then as we were reporting on that, that horrific disaster, the gaping hole in flames, a second plane the size of a jetliner slumps into the second World Trade Center tower. Uh, on the line with us, 1010 wins Wall Street reporter Larry Kofsky, who has left his post at the Stock Exchange, which has been evacuated anyway, and uh, is on the ground. Uh, Larry, what's your sense in terms of uh, emergency vehicles, and uh, are they able to get to the scene, or is there gridlock? What's going on? Well, there's, there's a lot of gridlock down here now. As I said, I'm a good 10 or 12 blocks away now down on Water Street, and there are sirens outside the uh, the telephone store that I'm uh, in is borrowing a telephone. Um, but uh, there was clearly gridlock, and it was even worse as close as you uh, as you got. Actually, as I walked out of the New York Stock Exchange and onto Broadway, this was uh, prior to that second explosion. It was fairly calm. Uh, the street was empty, and uh, it looked like it was available for emergency vehicles. But uh, now, certainly, uh, Lower Manhattan uh, looks to be a mess. All right. Breaking news now on 1010 Winds. Well, we now have some insight as to what's going on the air here. The FBI reports that it is investigating reports of a plane hijacking before the World Trade Center uh, crashes and explosions. Again, the FBI reporting a possible plane hijacking before the World Trade Center crashes. And again, there are two of those crashes. One caught on videotape, the second one of a uh, apparently a jetliner crashing into the second World Trade Center tower. And uh, it's on clear, of course, as to uh, the nature of the first plane that hit the first tower, but a major disaster is unfolding in New York City this morning. Apparent twin aircraft attacks on the Twin Towers. 1010 Winds reporter Larry Kofsky left his post at Wall Street to uh, go to the scene. Larry, are you still there? Okay, it looks like we've lost uh, Larry for now. There, and how about uh, Joan Fleischer, 1010 Wins account executive Joan Fleischer. She was the uh, first to call into our live line uh, with her report. Joan, uh, any further uh, information from your vantage point? Nothing that we can see other than that there are just two huge holes. Well, I can't see the second hole. There's this, this huge hole on the facing the north and smoke and fire coming from the second building as well as the first. It's unbelievable. You have uh, friends and neighbors who are up on your rooftop uh, with you. What is uh, what is their reaction? What is their sense of what's going on this morning? Well, one of the people that's on my building thought that she, she had seen um, a helicopter close by, and she thought perhaps the helicopter was the second hit. So she said that that was something that she thought had happened, although I didn't see anything like that. She thought that perhaps it was the, the, approx the close proximity to the second building that created the second explosion. Okay, a lot of conflicting information here this morning. Again, the FBI is investigating reports that a plane was hijacked before the World Trade Center crashes. We also have reports that LaGuardia and JFK are uh, suspending operations and uh, no doubt with good cause at this time. If you're just tuning in, uh, you may not believe me when I tell you this, but uh, unfortunately it is true. Planes 
have crashed into both towers of the World Trade Center this morning, causing massive explosions in both towers. The FBI is uh, looking into reports that there was a plane hijacking before the crashes. And uh, while we don't have any reports of casualties at this time, looking at the scene... The uh, gaping holes in both towers, the smoke and the flames, it is reasonable to assume that there has been massive loss of life in New York City this morning. Again, this makes the uh, World Trade Center bombing of about nine years ago look like a relatively minor incident. Uh, We will stay with this story and nothing but this story as the information develops. We have sent all of our reporters uh, to the scene. We have mustered them all and uh, we should be hearing from them momentarily. the live line with us now, 1010 Wins uh, account executive turned reporter for this morning's unfortunate event, uh, Joan Fleischer. Any, nobody at your location saw the second plane hit. I guess it's a, no. a vantage point issue. No, couldn't see it from this side. I didn't see it, and I was here when the second hit. The fire is spreading now. We can see it complete. Oh, my God. It's inside the, the first building, the, the one with the radio antenna on it, TV antenna. That fire is spread. It looks like two other floors. And at least three, one of my neighbors is saying. And the second also growing in... in uh, Okay, Joan, we're going to switch over to uh, former 1010 Winds reporter Randy Place. He is uh, down on Broadway. Randy, um, what is uh, your vantage point and what can you see from there? Morning, Lee. I'm at 52 Broadway on the 17th floor. As I look out, I see smoke pouring out of the uh, World Trade Center building that was hit. I still don't know the story because I've been on the phone uh, trying to report to you. Flames have been pouring out of the window on this one floor, and black smoke is reaching up into the sky. Lee, about 10 minutes before the explosion, we heard one explosion. I understand there was two. I was looking out of my office, and papers were were falling out of the sky. My colleague and I thought it was some kind of a uh, parade where they were throwing papers out of the window, but as I looked up, they were coming way up in the sky. We just saw papers. They looked like leaflets. We thought they, they might be for the mayoral race, uh, flyers. Then we heard the explosion, and I looked down, and everybody on Broadway and on Wall Street was running for their lives. They were running as fast as they could, and the running kept up for about 10 minutes. Uh, there's no more running now. People are walking uh, strolling around, but up there uh, in the building itself, flames still shooting out of the window, not as much as they were a few minutes ago, but that black smoke reaching up to the sky. Well, Randy, to bring you and everybody else up to speed, uh, both towers have been hit. Both towers have been hit by aircraft. We're not entirely certain of the size of the aircraft involved in the uh, first attack. The second one appears to be a twin-engine passenger jet. The FBI is investigating reports of a plane hijacking right before this disaster disaster unfolded, so that would make a uh, certain sort of sense. And again, uh, no reports yet of casualties, but obviously the destruction here is massive. The gaping hole in the sides of uh, both of these buildings obviously uh, will we'll verify that. Rescue crews are uh, making their way to the scene, and all of this unfolding in one of the busiest places in the world, downtown Manhattan, on a, on a weekday morning. Uh, former 1010 Winds reporter Randy Place is uh, watching this unfold from uh, Broadway. Uh, the people working with you in that in that building, what is their sense of what's going on this morning? Well, every, Lee, everybody was shocked, uh, holding hands, looking out the window, wondering if our colleagues we're all right who walk around there. We still don't know. Uh, they're out. I'm scheduled um, in the building where I work. I, I'm doing a seminar in about 10 minutes, so I'm going upstairs to do that. And uh, But it's complete shock, and uh, we were just amazed at all this paper falling out of the sky. Have you heard anything about that? Well, yes. Uh, both uh, of the reporters we had on the air, uh, in addition to you, uh, mentioned that uh, papers had been falling out of the sky. Of course, uh, World Trade Center, and it's an office building, and uh, it would make sense that uh, paper would fall from the sky. Again, both towers uh, hit by aircraft this morning. An unbelievable scene, uh, but unfortunately, it is the case. The FBI is investigating reports of uh, plane hijacking uh, before these World Trade Center crashes. To find out what we know so far, 
far, which information we've been able to compile. Let's go to uh, Judy DeAngelis in the 1010 Winds Newsroom. Judy. Well, thank you, Lee. Pretty much you have summed up what we do know, and frankly, it's not a whole lot. Uh, what we have said recently uh, that we heard from you, the FBI apparently, according to Associated Press, is investigating reports that two plane crashes at the World Trade Center are the result of possible foul play. Now, anybody who was uh, watching the video actually saw a plane crash into uh, the World Trade Center. The first explosion we did not see. That was on fire with smoke billowing, flames coming from inside the building. An absolutely huge gaping hole, debris falling down onto the street. As we're watching that horrific scene, another horrific scenario unfolds as we watch a plane actually crash into the second of the two World Trade Towers. Now, the first World Trade Tower that was hit is the one, as you heard James Faraday telling you before, that has the TV and radio antenna on top. The second plane crashing into the building that houses the observation deck on top. Obviously, at this point, no one has been able to get close enough to find out any immediate word on injuries or fatalities. But from the looks of things, it would be almost miraculous if there wasn't. I mean, it, you just have to accept the fact that this is probably going to be something where there are, are going to be fatalities and certainly injuries in, in the least case scenario. All right, Judy, uh, we now have word that all three local airports have been ordered to shut down. The airspace over New York City is a frozen zone. They don't uh, want anything flying into or out of here right now for very obvious reasons. Uh, former 1010 Winds reporter Randy Place is down on Broadway. He's been uh, keeping us posted on what he can see from that location. Uh, Randy, any change in the situation? Anything new you've noticed? No, nothing new. The uh, flames seem to... Uh, no, they're still pouring out of the uh, building. Uh, the smoke is blacker. One of my colleagues came in and said that the first thing he heard about it is uh, when his subway stopped at City Hall and the, the, there was an announcement that there was a problem, people had to get out right there. Uh, they let them go on to Rector Street, but outside of that, there's no new information. I'm just watching uh, the smoke pour out of here. The papers are still falling from the sky. Interestingly, these papers started before anything hit uh, the building. And uh, they, they were way, way up there. We thought they were leaflets. The activity of down below on Broadway and on Wall Street is back to normal. Uh, one of my colleagues here was just outside. Did you, have you picked up any information? Uh, this is Lee Harris, w, uh, WINS. Can I put my colleague Donald Kyle on? Sure, put Donald right. on. Hello, Lee. Uh, I just left the building and went out in the street. I walked over to Wall Street and Broadway. And I didn't see this myself, but I was told by several people uh, that two planes flew into the two towers, a smaller plane into the north tower, and then a, something the size of a, which was described to me the size of a 747, flew into the south side of the south tower. And the superstructure is just hanging off as a gaping hole. It's, I'd say, in the 80s in terms of height, on the eight, somewhere in the 80th floor, 70th floor, and smoke is billowing up to the top floors, and there are flames coming out of the building. Um, everybody on Wall Street is out on the streets. Uh, everybody's scared. Everybody's mainly the reaction I got was anger, wasn't anything, rather than fear. Uh, upon the people in the streets, uh, feeling that this was perhaps a terrorist attack. It uh, does certainly seem like this was not unintentional. The FBI, of course, is investigating yeah. reports that uh, there was a hijacking right before the crash. All three local That's airports have been ordered shut down, and uh, New York airspace is officially frozen as uh, people try to figure out what's going on here. Yeah. Uh, if uh, one of the uh, towers, of course, that was hit is home to uh, television and radio antenna, uh, it's reported that Channel 7 is off the air, although the majority of the other New York television stations uh, do appear to be on the air. We're now expecting some comments from President Bush on this uh, obvious disaster. We're expecting word from him shortly. And again, if you've just joined us, uh, it's hard to believe, but uh, it is my sad duty to report that it is true that two planes have slammed into both towers of the World Trade Center at the uh, upper street story level. There is massive destruction, fire, gaping holes in both towers, and we can assume massive loss of life, although we have no confirmation of that at this time. 
Just to bring you again up to speed, planes crashed into the upper floors of both World Trade Center towers minutes apart this morning in a horrific scene of explosions and fires that left gaping halls. We have no immediate word on injuries or fatalities, which uh, the first crash occurred shortly before 9 a.m., the others right after 9 a.m. Officials say the FBI is investigating reports of a plane hijacking. The towers, of course, were struck by bombers back in 1993, but unfortunately, that looks like a minor affair compared to what has happened here this morning. President Bush is expected uh, to comment sometime in the uh, next few minutes on what's happened here this morning, but at this point we have relatively little official word on uh, what has happened. We only know what we have been seeing and what uh, millions of others have been seeing, including a great many eyewitnesses to the scene, including uh, Donald, and I'm sorry I forgot your last name in the uh, course of events here. Uh, you were down on, on Broadway and you had been out on the street at uh, one point not too long ago, correct? Are you talking to me? Yes, yes, oh, I'm I was. Sorry. <laughs> well, would you repeat that? I was talking to my colleague. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go to 1010 Wins reporter Ben Meverack. He is in uh, Queens. He has... Uh Oh, wait a minute. President Bush is speaking at this time, and uh, he takes priority. Washington Bridge is open. All others are closed. <laughs> Today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. President Bush live on 1010 Winds commenting on the horrific tragedy that has unfolded in New York City this morning. Uh, he went and uh, concluded that this is an act of terrorism and certainly at first glance it could appear to be nothing else. There's no way that two planes are going to accidentally fly into the World Trade Center moments apart. Now all three local airports have been ordered shut down. The airspace over New York City has been frozen. In addition, and this will affect more people, the Port Authority has closed closed all Port Authority bridges and tunnels, and that means the George Washington Bridge, the Lincoln, and the Holland Tunnels. Keep it locked in to 1010 Winds, obviously. There's uh, no place else to go right now but to stay with us. 1010 Winds News Director Ben Meverack in Queens this morning, and of course, uh, even from uh, as far away as that, you can get a pretty good sense of what's going on. Ben? Okay, unfortunately, I can't add too much to uh, the factual uh, substance of uh, what you've been reporting from where I am. I can tell you, as I left my house from uh, Long Island this morning, taking the Southern State Parkway, uh, you could see there were no clouds in the sky other than this huge plume of black smoke. Uh, I just want to give you a sense as to how the World Trade Center explosion or, uh, or terrorist act is impacting on some of the outer boroughs and all around the city. As I was dropping in, there were uh, literally dozens of police cars, undercover cars, emergency vehicles, uh, all racing in toward the city. People were pulling over on the Southern State Parkway as well as on the Cross Island, uh, taking a look. And the only way I can describe it to you from my distance, which is sort of a wide view of the scene, is as you watch the disaster videos uh, that are often shown on television with the tornadoes, as the cameras follow tornadoes, it looks like one huge tornado lying on its side, the black smoke, taking up much of the skyline uh, on a lower level, but it looks like a giant twister lying on its side. People on the sidewalks at gas stations all staring in the direction of the city, some of them with their mouths open, their hands over their mouths. They're beginning to just get a sense as to what's happening as word begins to spread. And, and as you've been reporting, we can't even begin to understand 
uh, the significance uh, or the significant impact uh, this is going to have as word continues to come in. Lee? Okay, Ben, a reminder, the Port Authority has closed all of its bridges and tunnels, so if you were planning on coming over to the city from New Jersey for some reason at this time, you might as well turn around and go back where you came from. Let's go to 1010 Winds anchor Judy D'Angelo. She's in the 1010 Winds newsroom uh, with a compilation of some of the latest information on the, what we know about this. Judy? Well, thank you, Lee. Right now, uh, President Bush issuing a statement about it. We're expecting a comment from Mayor Giuliani at any moment. As you just mentioned, uh, all the uh, Port Authority bridges and tunnels, that includes the George Washington Bridge, Lincoln, Holland, they are closed. You're not going to get in. You're not going to get out, so just stay where you are. Airspace lockdown as well for the entire metropolitan region, and that includes all of the airports closed down for the time being, LaGuardia, Kennedy, and Newark. Again, just don't even try and get there. We don't know yet about uh, Wall Street. What We're not seeing any numbers uh, up on the screen, and usually that's where we see them. We're going to assume that Wall Street has not even gotten underway. No opening bell. Uh, and what we are getting right now is that it's possible that the, this was an American airline 767 from Boston. We're getting some information. It is uh, not confirmed at this point. We don't know whether that's the first plane or the second plane, but we're certainly checking it all out, and we'll get back to you just as soon as we do have that information, Lee. All right, and let's hear what President Bush had to say about this a few minutes ago live on 1010 Winds. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. And that is indeed what it would appear to be with the two planes hitting just moments apart. And uh, it had definitely the look of a deliberate act about it. 1010 Winds reporter Juliet Papa is down on 14th Street. And Juliet, what's the situation there? Well, Lee, I have been driving down 9th Avenue to head to the scene, but on my way I got the first glimpse of the smoke that's emanating from the towers. And uh, as I'm here on 14th Street, right around Bleecker, I have a bird's eye view of this gaping hole, which is uh, several stories high at the top end of the Trade Center, and smoke is just billowing out. People around here are just standing. They're on their cell phones. They have cameras with them because it is a clear view. It's a clear, clear day. The smoke is gray. It continues to billow out, and you see this gaping hole near the top end of the World Trade Center. It looks like it's about, you know, 20 stories down from the top, but it is about several stories high, and it is facing north. So as I'm traveling south, I can see the hole clearly as some of the smoke now is rising, and you can see the hole even better than I did just a couple of minutes ago. It is just an amazing, incredible, horrible, horrible sight. People standing here in awe, just dumbfounded. People looking very sad as I've been sort of parked here to the side of the street. Uh, the police vehicles and emergency service vehicles and fire trucks keep speeding past me. I've also seen ambulances speeding uh, north away from me. I don't know if they are uh, filled with people or victims. Uh, we don't know yet. We don't have a clear idea yet of uh, the tragedy here. Well, looking, looking at the size of the holes and the smoke and the fire, it is uh, obvious that there has been massive loss of life here this morning and uh, probably even, even more injuries. Uh, New York has seen nothing like this since 1945 when a uh, B-25 bomber accidentally flew into the Empire State Building and all indications are here that these two incidents this morning, two planes flying into both towers of the World Trade Center. This does not have the markings of an accident. Let's go to 1010 Winds reporter Steve Kastenbaum. He's watching from Brooklyn. That is the direction where the smoke from this disaster is blowing. Steve? Well, Lee, as you can hear me, uh, ambulances, fire equipment, and police cars and emergency vehicles all rushing into Manhattan still at this time. You can hear all over the borough the sirens hang towards the Brooklyn and Manhattan bridges, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. And here in downtown Brooklyn, you can see the thick black smoke uh, plume uh, spreading over uh, Brooklyn, heading south for miles. It is a clear day, not a cloud in the sky. All you can see is the uh, fire coming from the World Trade Center building. Buildings, one of them about halfway up, the other about two-thirds of the way up. And the office buildings down here in downtown Brooklyn must be empty because everybody is out on the sidewalks. They are all staring up at the World Trade Centers. They are quiet. They are solemn. They are looking at this in total disbelief. Of course, as you mentioned before, obviously a terrible loss of life in this. No word yet on, on what's going on on the floors above where these airplanes uh, struck the World Trade Centers. 
Uh, the first explosion, we felt it here in Brooklyn a little bit after a quarter to nine. And then around ten after nine, the second explosion, it rocked the whole area. My windows in my apartment building rattled. Steve, I'm going to interrupt you because we're being pressed into public service here. The New York City Fire Department is issuing a call for a total recall of all officers and firefighters. You should all report to your companies. Again, if you are a New York City firefighter, drop what you're doing. Report to your company. A major disaster is occurring in New York City this morning. As to how this happened, well, the FBI is looking into reports that a plane was hijacked, and there are indications that it may have been a Boeing 767 out of Boston. Uh, we're contacting American Airlines. No comment from there. But uh, there are reports one of the planes was an American Airlines 767 from Boston. If you're a New York City firefighter, report to your company. Report to your company now. 1010 Winds reporter John Montone is about six blocks away from the disaster. John? And Lee? I was a lot closer than that. I got down to Church Street. I was standing right in between uh, the two towers, which, as you can see on your television screen, uh, the smoke, the black smoke and fire is just pouring out. I spoke to a number of people on the way. People are in absolute panic. Uh, they are running They were running away from the building. They were screaming. Many of them uh, were, were telling me that they heard the two explosions, that they heard one explosion in the North Tower first, and then a couple of electricians were upstairs on the 85th floor. They said that as they were coming down, that everyone said, you're going to be okay, just get out of the building. They heard this tremendous bang, this explosion. And as you said on the air, uh, they, uh, they believed that a second plane had hit uh, the South Tower. So apparently both towers were hit. Uh, the flames up in the air, the streets. I'm, I'm in a, a, a record store right now about five or six blocks away, so you can't appreciate it. You're not hearing the sounds that I heard out in the street. Uh, uh, it is full of sirens, ambulances, uh, fire trucks are out there. People are just walking in, in all directions, trying to make contact, trying to call their loved ones. There, there are women down here who tell me that their husbands work up on the top floors. They, they are in absolute panic trying to get uh, pay phones that work. Some people are able to communicate through cell phones. I have not been able to, but I can tell you right now, it looks like a war zone. Church, uh, Church Street, uh, th there is debris all over. It would be almost impossible to drive a car through that area. It, it, it's just a grim reminder of, of what happened less than an hour ago. Uh, debris is still falling. In fact, I was standing in the middle there trying to get a better view of it when I was told to move because they're afraid that giant pieces of debris may fall. Uh, again, the, the streets in the entire downtown area are impassable. People are, are in the streets. People are lying down. I don't know if they were victims, if they were in the trade center or not or they passed out, they were just upset, but there are triage units being set up, uh, people being being treated, and, and other people just walking around with looks of absolute stunned. Breaking news now on 10 and Winds. Interrupting John for just a moment, we now have reports of a fire at the Pentagon. A fire at the Pentagon being reported this morning. No word on whether it's related to what's going on here in New York City this morning, but uh, I guess putting two and two together, we might assume that... Uh, there's probably some connection. Again, both towers of the World Trade Center have been hit by planes. There's a report that perhaps one of them was uh, a hijacked 767, an American Airlines flight out of Boston. If you're a New York City firefighter, you are ordered to report to your station at this time. Uh, all New York City firefighters ordered to report to their stations. President Bush went on the air about 10 minutes ago. He was visiting a school in Sarasota, Florida. He made this comment. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. New Jersey State Police say all Hudson River bridges and tunnels have been closed as a precaution in the wake of the apparent attack on the World Trade Center towers. In addition... All three New York airports have been closed down and the airspace over New York City has been frozen. 1010 Winds newsman John Montone is a few blocks from the scene of the disaster. And let's go to 1010 Winds reporter Stan Brooks instead. We understand uh, he's on 14th Street. Stan? Yeah, now I'm down in the village, but Lee, I've never seen anything like this uh, listening to uh, Ben and listening to John. I can only tell you that 
there are people just standing on the street, almost their mouths open, gaping, dumbfounded. Uh, some people taking pictures of the smoke pouring from the World Trade Center towers. Others just standing there looking like, oh, my God, what's happening? And then I started down the West Side Highway, which was just a massive traffic uh, jam uh, with fire engines and emergency vehicles, ambulances, police cars. On Breaking news now on 1010 Winds. Well, we have word now that the White House is being evacuated. President Bush is not at the White House. He was down in uh, Sarasota, Florida, speaking at a school, so this won't involve him personally. But there is word that the White House is being evacuated. We also have a report of a fire at the Pentagon. So uh, all heck is breaking loose uh, around here this morning. This, of course, in addition to uh, the disaster that we got word of initially about one hour ago, that a plane had crashed into uh, the North Tower of the World Trade Center, and this was followed a few moments later by a second plane crashing into the South Tower of the World Trade Center. And, uh, by the way, the New York Stock Exchange has been evacuated as well, so nothing going on there at this time. Let's go back to 1010 Winds reporter Stan Brooks. He's down in the village gauging the situation there. Stan? Right, Lee. I'm, on, uh, seven, I'm about to turn into 7th Avenue South and see how far I can go down there. But uh, I happened to see somebody in another car, uh, somebody I knew, and we were chatting as we were stuck in traffic. And he said, what do you think this does to the election? Which is an interesting question because uh, the city seems to be in some ways at a stamp in the street gaping and gawking at the uh, smoke. And I don't think it's really affecting a lot of people. Okay, we have a bad connection with Stan. Again, a repeating, the White House has been evacuated. President Bush is not there. He was in Sarasota, Florida, although he is now returning to Washington, if he can get there. There's also a fire at the Pentagon this morning. And again, no word on whether any of this is all related, but uh, indications are that it might be. 1010 Winds editor Jim Maloney is at the uh, Lincoln or the Holland Tunnel, Jim. Well, I'm at the Lincoln Tunnel, and uh, I hate to uh, keep repeating what other people are saying, but it's just a scene just like surreal. People out of their cars milling around. Uh, the, the tunnel is apparently has been blocked off, and they're turning now they're turning us around. And there's no entrance into Manhattan. But all I've been doing for the last half hour is sitting here on Helix, which provides a great view of this. But it's just a scene that I've never seen before. People standing around with their mouths open on cell phones trying to get a connection to get through. I finally was able to just a couple of minutes ago. And just people just don't know what to do. All right, Jim, we have a report now of a fire on the Washington Mall, and the west wing of the White House has now been evacuated again. President Bush not in Washington uh, when all this occurred. And... Uh, we are, let's see, okay, here is an indication as to what may have happened at the Pentagon. This will sound familiar. An Associated Press reporter says he saw the tail end of a large airliner plunge into the building. Uh, that would perhaps account for the fire that is being reported at this hour at the Pentagon. An Associated Press reporter saying that he saw the tail end of a large airliner plunge into the building. Of course, this is uh, essentially what happened at the World Trade Center. Both towers hit by aircraft this morning. And uh, confirmation now that an aircraft crash near the Pentagon and the west wing of the White House was evacuated due to threats of terrorism. This is uh, getting hard to keep up with. It's a significant fire at the Pentagon. Smoke from the west side of the building. It's being evacuated. And a report that a plane may have crashed into it. The uh, police force at the Pentagon is keeping security extremely tight. The west wing of the White House has been evacuated as a possible precaution as well. President Bush was not there at uh, when all this occurred. Occurred. He was in Sarasota, Florida, where he made this remark. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. So to summarize where things stand at this point, we've had uh, two planes crash into each of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. A report now that a plane has crashed into the Pentagon and the White House, where President Bush was not. He was in Sarasota, Florida, has been evacuated. Mr. Bush is making his way back to Washington. So. The uh, country and the city appear to be in the throes of a terrorist attack at this time. 
1010 Wins editor Jim Maloney is at the Lincoln Tunnel where uh, he was trying to get back into the city. And uh, the tunnels, both the uh, Lincoln and the Holland and as the George Washington Bridge as well, have been closed down as a precaution. The uh, three major airports in the New York City area have also been closed down. And uh, all of the airspace over New York City has been frozen. Let's go back to 1010 Winds Newsman John Montone. He's about uh, four, five, six blocks not, away. Not, from e- not even, Lee. A little, uh, little closer than that. And uh, I did not want to uh, be the one who uh, spread any type of a panic uh, mentioning a terrorist attack earlier. Uh, but now that you have mentioned it, I will tell you that almost everyone I have spoken to on the street as I was uh, running uh, down to the World Trade Center said the same thing, that from what they had either heard from other people or had been able to glimpse by themselves, they said it appeared as if the planes made a beeline uh, for the uh, Twin Towers, that this was no accident. One fellow said, you know, unless they collided and hit, it, it appeared to me that they meant to hit uh, the Twin Towers. And I, and I think that most of the people out on the streets b- believe that. And as I, I mentioned just a, a moment ago, I did not want to mention that at first and uh, start any type of rumors or panics. But now that we see that there has a pa- been a pattern uh, that has has developed both here and in Washington. Uh, I will say that that's what most people here believe. That's what they saw. Um, again, I'm about, uh, I'm told now I'm about three blocks away. I'm at a store called Record Explosion uh, on Broadway, and uh, th- these folks are nice enough. I'm going to try to go back out, talk to some more people, gather as much information as I can, and uh, hopefully I'll be back on with you uh, as soon as possible. Do you have any questions I could answer for you now? Well, I'll tell you what, you get your uh, act together and your thoughts together, and uh, we'll go to 1010 Winds newsman James Faraday, who has an update on the national situation. James? Indeed, Lee. Uh, developments coming fast and furious this morning. A late word out of Washington from a source in the nation's capital. The White House has been threatened with a terrorist attack. That word coming just moments ago. Uh, the west wing of the White House has been evacuated as a precaution. Uh, Also, there is a fire and an explosion at the Pentagon this morning. Uh, The very seat of our nation's defense uh, apparently uh, been targeted for another terrorist attack. Uh, A radio reporter says he saw a large airliner crash into the Pentagon. And, uh, of course, there are now, uh, uh, like what we saw with the World Trade Center earlier... What we saw with the World Trade Center earlier, the large plumes of black smoke now being seen from uh, the Pentagon and uh, over the Washington Mall where there is a fire as well. Uh, Also in Chicago, a report of the Sears Tower being evacuated. Uh, The situation there, uh, no apparent terrorist uh, threat to speak of, at least at this moment, but an evacuation that is being taken as a precaution at this time. It doesn't sound like a bad idea, James. Let's go back to 1010 Uh, Wednesdays, man. If I can break in for just a moment, uh, this late word just coming in to us. The FAA has closed off all airports across the country. Uh, No takeoffs, no landings now. Uh, That word coming in from the FAA just moments ago, all airports. Airports nationwide shut down. Okay, developments coming fast and furious this morning. Uh, obviously, a major and very serious situation underway in New York City this morning. Uh, as James just mentioned, the FAA has shut down all takeoffs nationwide. 1010 Wins newsman John Montone is at this point, I believe, closest to the scene of the uh, disaster at the World Trade Center. John? And we appear to have lost contact with him. First reports we got this morning came uh, courtesy of account executive uh, Joan Fleischer, who's been watching this unfold now for, uh, I guess, about an hour, Joan, right? Yes, it's just a... Oh, it was another... Oh, it was an internal explosion in the North Building. I'm sorry, would you repeat that? We had a bad connection. Um, there was another explosion about five minutes ago, which seems like it was internal on the north building and now the smoke is you can't see the second building it's almost completely obscured um i don't see real i don't see any intense fire from the north building but i see a lot of fire from the south building and uh 
thick billowing smoke, and probably the third explosion I heard and saw was basically internal. Okay, at least it did not appear to be the uh, result of another plane hitting no, the building. I don't think so. Uh, as we mentioned uh, a few moments ago, if you're a New York City firefighter and you are off at this time, you are requested to report to duty at your station house immediately. Obviously, we need the help here this morning. One uh, word that we have not gotten in the hour since uh, this news broke uh, pertains to casualties. Uh, we've been mentioning that it appears to us from what we're able to see, uh, the gaping holes and the smoke and the flames and the debris falling to the ground, that uh, there is quite likely massive loss of life here in New York City this morning. But uh, we have yet to get any information as regards uh, casualties of any sort, uh, either deaths or injuries. We do know that emergency crews have been rushing to the scene for the last hour and that uh, ambulances have been seen leaving the scene, presumably transporting people to hospitals. But again, no uh, word, no official word as regards this. The FBI is investigating reports that there was a hijacking of an American Airlines 767 out of Boston. And that was perhaps one of the planes that uh, was involved in uh, this disaster this morning. Apparently both towers of the World Trade Center are hit by aircraft. And additionally, a report that a plane has crashed into the Pentagon this morning. West Wing of the White House has been evacuated. President Bush was not there when all of this occurred. He was at a school in Sarasota, Florida. And uh, he made this remark, which was heard live on 1010 Winds. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. And all airports nationwide have been closed down at least until 5 p.m. today as a precaution. The George Washington Bridge, the Lincoln, and the Holland Tunnels, they are also closed down. Let's go to 1010 Winds reporter Eileen LaPalmer. She is at City Hall. Eileen? Well, Lee, I'm here live outside of City Hall. The entire, as you can imagine, it is absolute chaos here. The entire city has come to a standstill. Everyone just standing, looking at the smoke pouring out of the World Trade Center at this moment. There are certain people trying to call their families. All the cell phones are down, as you can imagine, since they are the tribe at the World Trade Center is the antennas where people would be calling on the cell phones. Therefore, people are lining up around the block just to use a pay phone at this point. Everyone's still trying to figure out what's going on. I ran into this woman named Susan. She was supposed to be in the World Trade Center today at this very moment. Again, at this point, everything is shut down. The Woolworth building has been evacuated. City Hall is shut down and also has been evacuated. We will bring you more as soon as we have it. Eileen LaPalmer, 1010 Winds, live outside of City Hall. Okay, now we have word from Washington that the Capitol and the Treasury are being evacuated. This is in addition to the White House and to the Pentagon. The Pentagon apparently having been hit by a plane this morning, not unlike the World Trade Center Twin Towers, both of which appear to have been hit by planes. The FBI looking into reports that at least one of the planes was a hijacked 767 American airliner out of Boston. No comments so far from American Airlines as regards that report. The New York Stock Exchange was evacuated. It is closed. That's probably not a bad thing as the uh, Dow futures were down a, a massive 150 points, apparently on the news of what had transpired here in New York City this morning. If you are a New York City firefighter, you are requested to report, ordered to report to your station immediately. Uh, we need the help this morning with a major disaster unfolding in New York City. And uh, the world has changed markedly in little less than an hour. When we first got word that a plane had crashed into the World Trade Center, we then saw a second plane crash into the second tower of the World Trade Center. We later got word of a plane apparently crashing into the Pentagon, word that the White House had been evacuated, now the Capitol and the Treasury also having been evacuated. What we have not heard yet are casualties 
figures for what is obviously a massive disaster at the World Trade Center, and uh, there is no doubt massive loss of life there. We've been uh, talking to various reporters, people who've been trying to get to the scene, people who have been watching it unfold from uh, all parts of the city, because uh, the World Trade Center obviously is uh, visible for many, many miles, and uh, it's hard to miss when there is uh, smoke and uh, a massive explosion coming out of it. The first we heard was from uh, 1010 Winds Account Executive uh, Joan Fleischer. She was the first to call this in. Joan, you're still there? I'm here. Okay. Uh, you've been watching this on a, on a rooftop with uh, friends and uh, neighbors. And uh, how would you gauge their reaction at this point? Everyone is in shock. Everyone, people can't believe what they heard or they saw. Um, they've been running downstairs to keep an eye on TV. But I haven't left this area since I called you the first. And it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, they're still bringing in all the police and the fire trucks. They're ongoing. Um, the smoke is its unbelievable. You, it doesn't even look like they've been able to do anything other than respond to, I guess, emergencies on ground because there's nothing happening on it, within the building that I can see from here on top. They have police uh, helicopters overhead, I think, to keep everybody else away. And uh, the smoke is billowing, still heading towards Brooklyn. It's, it, you can smell the smoke from here. It's coming from the entire area of both buildings. It's unbelievable. unbelievable well, it, this, this really is a, a case of a situation that you thought couldn't get any worse, getting no. progress, progressively worse. Yes. Uh, first one plane crashing into the World Trade Center, then uh, a second crashing into the second tower of the World Trade Center. Unbelievable. Word now that a plane has crashed into the Pentagon. It has been evacuated along with the uh, West Wing of the White House. The Treasury has been evacuated. The Capitol evacuated. The Sears Tower in Chicago has been evacuated. There was no threat of an attack against the uh, Sears Tower, but they're obviously going to quit while they're ahead there. And uh, all of this, the world... Oh, uh, wait. Oh, Oh my God! There's a, oh my God! The building fell. Are you there? The building just fell. Which which? Building? Oh my God! The south building just the south building just crumbled from the top. Oh my God! The building just fell. The entire World Trade Center on the, the south building just fell. I just saw the whole thing. Oh my God! Oh my God! I can't see anything now. The whole thing went down. What the... Oh my God! Oh, I saw the building crumble. It's all the way down. I can't see. I can't see at what point it's still standing. Oh my God! The what? Building just... Oh my Jonah God! Jonah saying is true. That... This is 1010 Wins, WINS New York. One of the two towers, the South Tower of the World Trade Center, has just columbo, crumbled, collapsed in a pile of dust. This uh, approximately less than an hour after it was hit by an aircraft. The second building, the second building completely down. You know what I'm saying? Where are you? I was there when the first... You heard the first... I was up here thought. Me too! And I went and I looked... Uh, a situation that uh, started bad just gets worse and worse and worse. The World Trade Center, South Tower, which was hit by a plane and wrecked by an explosion approximately an hour ago, has totally collapsed. The North Tower is still standing... But the World Trade Center South Tower has collapsed. Let's go live to CNN for a moment. A black billowing cloud of smoke that, has, that is rising over the Pentagon. You heard Jamie McIntyre a moment ago describe where that uh, was coming from. I can also tell you that the local radio, in addition to talking about evacuations, as we've heard at the Pentagon, and the White House is reporting that the uh, Capitol building has been evacuated and the Treasury Department has been evacuated. Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, is exceptionally tense. 
and uh, clearly taking steps as if it is virtually under siege here. We don't know specifically, as you as you said, uh, what has taken place at the Pentagon, but this is very serious, striking at the heart of the national government. And as John King was explaining, Frank, the White House Frank, it's Aaron. I, I need to interrupt you for a second. Uh, again, there has been a second explosion uh, here in uh, Manhattan at the, at the Trade Center. We are getting reports that a part of the tower, the second tower, the one a, a bit further to the south of us, uh, has collapsed. We are checking on that. Well, uh, again, it does appear that the second oh, tower at the World Trade Center has collapsed. Tenton Wentz account executive Joan Fleischer was looking at the building, and uh, boy, it was just three minutes ago. And Joan, yeah. what did you see? Oh, well, got lots of smoke, and then the next thing I heard an explosion, and the building from the top, the south building, just crumbled. Just completely went down. I saw it. It's hard to see all the pieces, but you could see it tipping over and just crashing to the ground. Now, it's, I don't even know where it crashed, crumbled from on the south building because there's so much smoke, I can't see anything now. All I can tell you is that the fire seems to have spread on the north building now because I can see the, the, the flames on the south side, which I couldn't see before. Well, we can only hope that uh, they had gotten uh, everybody or the majority of the people out of that building before it, before it collapsed. But, again, uh, you know, these are enormous buildings, and uh, obviously uh, let's hope that they have the area around those buildings right. cleared out. We've had right. no reports of uh, casualties. Obviously, there are going to be uh, more than a few in the, uh, in the wake of this. If you're just joining us this morning, uh, you're in for a, a horrific surprise. Both buildings of the World Trade Center have been uh, hit by uh, aircraft and the South Tower of the World Trade Center has apparently collapsed in a pile of dust. Let's go to okay. 10, 10 Winds editor Jim Maloney. He was uh, in Hoboken uh, waiting for, uh, waiting to get into the tunnel when this happened. Jim? Yelly, and uh, the scene here is just one right out of one of the movies you would see in Hollywood. People walking around with uh, cell phones in tears. Uh, holding their heads, looking up at what's left of the World Trade Center, and just shaking their heads in disbelief. The entire side of New Jersey now is totally affected by this and has been for quite some time. The tunnels are shut down, people are milling around, not knowing what to do, not knowing where to go. It's a scene just of utter chaos and just uh, wondering what happened to those folks in the Trade Center just makes it all the worse. Lee. All right, 1010 Winds newsman Jim Maloney, who was uh, watching the South Tower of the World Trade Center when it went down, and uh, he is stuck at the... Uh Lincoln Tunnel. Uh, all of the tunnels, both uh, leading from New Jersey into New York City, have been shut down, as has the George Washington Bridge. All air traffic in uh, the United States has been suspended until at least 5 o'clock in the wake of this. Let's get uh, brought up to date on what has transpired in about the last hour and 15 minutes in this country, in this world. Here's 1010 Winds newsman James Faraday. James. Okay, Lee, and to recap, uh, two planes, of course, crashed into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in lower Manhattan this morning. Uh, the aircraft, uh, first one, crashed into the upper floors of one of the towers. Uh, that is the one with TV and radio antenna on top. Witnesses reported hearing a huge explosion and heavy black smoke could be seen pouring out of the building. Wreckage was also seen embedded in the upper floors of the skyscraper and ever since has been raining down onto the streets of lower Manhattan. Uh, shortly afterward, a second plane hit the other tower. That is the tower with the observation deck on top. The Associated Press has learned the FBI is investigating reports that the two crashes are the result of foul play. Of course, uh, there's no word on casualties, but suffice to say, the uh, loss of life uh, presumably profound. Uh, given the magnitude of this disaster, the South Tower of the World Trade Center just minutes ago collapsed to the ground. Only one tower is standing at this point. President Bush, speaking in Florida, was quick to react to this tragedy. I have spoken to the vice president to the governor of New York, to the director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. This is not only a New York story. In Washington, word that the Pentagon has been struck. A plane crashed into the Pentagon this morning. CNN's Chris Plant is in the nation's capital. And speaking to people uh, here at, uh, at the Pentagon as they're being evacuated from the building, I am told by several people that there was, in fact, an explosion. 
I was told by one uh, witness, uh, an Air Force enlisted, uh, senior enlisted man, that he was outside when it occurred. He said that he saw a helicopter circle the building. He said that it appeared to be a U.S. military helicopter and that it disappeared behind the building where the helicopter landing zone is. And that he then saw a fireball uh, go into the sky. That fireball was apparently from a plane. An Associated Press reporter on the scene saw the tail end of a large airliner plunge into the Pentagon. Of course, the Pentagon has been evacuated along with the West Wing of the White House, the Capitol, all major branches of the United States government evacuated this morning. In Chicago, the Sears Tower has been evacuated as a precautionary measure. Uh, no a known threat has been made against Chicago's tallest building at this point. New York Stock Exchange has been shut down. The State Department has been evacuated. The Associated Press has learned the White House has been evacuated after the Secret Service received a credible threat of terrorist act against the mansion. The State Department, as we mentioned, also evacuated. Fox News Channel's Jim Engel is at the White House and has the very latest. The roads around the White House, the streets around the White House were blocked seconds ago. Uh, members of the Uniform Division of the Secret Service ran out to intersections and started diverting traffic. There are emergency Emergency vehicles on almost every block around the White House. The road south of the White House has also been blocked. And as you know, the White House is being evacuated. Federal employees are standing on the street corners in and around the White House, uh, having left the building for fear of another attack. President Bush is now flying to Washington from Florida, where he'd scheduled an educational event. Uh, the president's plane, Air Force One, uh, the only one allowed to take off at this point because the FAA has halted all takeoffs nationwide. 1010 Winds, continuous coverage moves on now with 1010 Winds anchor Judy DeAngelis. As you said, it is an absolutely unreal sight. Uh, you see the pictures side by side of New York and Washington billowing smoke, uh, the collapse of the World Trade Center. 1010 Winds reporter Eileen LaPalmer is down in lower Manhattan. We're going to try and get to her live now and see if she can uh, give us uh, any more information. Eileen, are you there? Yeah, Judy, I'm here. Well, all I can tell you is, as you can imagine, absolute chaos. People were running, panicking just when the smoke and flames were billowing out. People were trying to head down south towards the World Trade Center when suddenly there was a large rumbling and the entire tower fell and collapsed to the ground. People came running north because of the smoke. It was billowing up Broadway. There's a thick black cloud of smoke. You can't even see down Broadway from the vantage point of City Hall. I've now moved inside a building, but all the buildings along Broadway here at City Hall are being evacuated. On my way up to this building, I ran into a woman who was in Tower 2 when the plane crashed into Tower 1. Were you able to get any information from me? Did this happen? Yes, I was in the building. Oh my God, you were in the building? I was on the 92nd floor of number two. And I didn't see the first plane crash, but I was on a lower floor when the second plane crashed into number two. And my brother's a photojournalist, and he's down there now. I hope he's okay. How did you, how did you get out? Like I walked down 92 floors, and I stopped on the 70-something floor because they said everything was okay, and the second plane crashed. Into the second building, right? Yeah. What happened? So it was the first cap. Of course, at this point, everyone's concern is just getting north, getting away from the World Trade Center, as well as finding out where their families are. There are lines around the block to use pay phones. Everyone is scrambling, trying to figure out what is happening here. We will bring you more as soon as we know it. Eileen LaPalmer, live, 1010 Winds, outside of City Hall. Well, as much as people would like to get in or out, you will not be able to do so into the city. The Port Authority, we are reiterating, has closed all of its bridges and tunnels, and that includes the George Washington Holland and Tunnel. A busy, busy place, St. Vincent's hospital. Fox News Channel reporter Molly Falloner is there. St. Vincent's Hospital basically looks like it is under siege. There are flares out forming a block perimeter around this hospital. I watched one victim come out of an ambulance go in on a stretcher. They look uh, exceedingly injured and right now there are hospital beds lined up on the street right outside the hospital waiting with paramedics right next to them for the waves of injuries. They are obviously expecting to come in here Again, the city's hospitals on major alert with the terror attacks in the city and now at the Pentagon and with the, one of the World Trade Towers collapsing. This has gone from bad to worse. It is nothing short of horrific. This is 1010 Winds Radio with this breaking news story. Let's go back now to my colleague, Lee Harris. All right, Judy. A reminder again, if you're in New York City... 
fire department member, you are to report to your firehouse immediately. Obviously, uh, they need all the help they can get this morning. Report to your firehouse immediately. 1010 Winds reporter Steve Torrey is at the Empire State Building for some reason this morning, and let's go to him. Steve, what's going on there? All right, Lee, seen here at the Empire State Building appears to be under control. As soon as we got uh, here, the, we received word that uh, once the explosions happened at the Trade Center, the Empire State Building was quickly evacuated. I spoke with Sergeant Spaniard of the NYPD. I was told uh, by my superiors to make sure that the building was being evacuated and uh, to assist them in any way possible. Well, obviously, the scene there appears to be under control, of course, everywhere on the street, as you might expect. And as you've been hearing, and we're repeating ourselves here, people panicking. They got a clear view of what was going on from their vantage point, and people are still not exactly sure what had taken place, asking us questions. But again, the Empire State Building quickly evacuated, and they are hopeful that everyone was out of there in time. Steve Torrey, 1010 Winds in Midtown. Breaking news now on 1010 Winds. Add to the list of explosions this morning, an explosion near the U.S. Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C. That is according to Fox News. Again, we had a report of an explosion earlier near the, at the Pentagon, and now an explosion reported near the U.S. Supreme Court. That is according to Fox News. Add on top of that, of course, the uh, explosions at the World Trade Center, apparently caused by planes crashing into them, and the South Tower of the World Trade Center after burning for about 45 or 50 minutes collapsed in a pile of rubble. One good bit of information we got from Eileen LaPalmer at City Hall not too long ago is that people who were way up on the uh, 92nd floor of the World Trade Center, the South Tower, got out uh, A, before the second plane hit, and B, before the tower collapsed. So we have uh, hope that at least some people uh, were able to escape the carnage this morning, and we do not, as of yet, have any ideas to... Uh, loss of life or injuries this morning. Uh, 1010 Winds reporter Steve uh, Torre just reporting in from uh, the Empire State Building. With us uh, since this began, and it, it seems like a lifetime ago now, but it was only about an hour and a half ago, 1010 Winds account executive uh, Joan Fleischer, and Joan was on the line with us 14 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, watching as the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. Joan? Hi. Well, the, 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 the scene gets worse. We just saw about six people jump out of the north building from the top. The bodies just jumping out of the building to just escape, I guess, what seems to be an unbelievable fire and smoke inhalation. There had to be five or six bodies just jumping out of the building. And everyone here is just, I mean, it's... It's a sight that doesn't, you can't even describe. I, I'm doing a terrible job telling you what I'm seeing, but it defies words. It is the most horrible. I can now see some blue sky where the second building was, the south building. It's not there. I don't know how far it fell to the ground, but it crumbled. And I can see blue sky when the, the, the smoke clears. It is a horrific scene. All right, Joan. Uh Yes, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, sorry that you've had to see that. 1010 Winds reporter Eileen LaPalmer uh, was ensconced at City Hall. I understand you've moved. Eileen? Uh, yeah, Lee, I am outside of City Hall. Where they are. They have evacuated City Hall. They've evacuated all the buildings around here. They're trying to move the crowds north. This was already underway just after the two planes had crashed into Tower 1 and Tower 2. And then when everyone was starting to calm down and look at the smoke building, billowing out and still running around trying to figure out what was going on, suddenly Tower 2 collapsed. A billow of smoke went up. The smoke started coming up Broadway. Literally everyone started turning and running north to get away from the smoke, not really sure what's in the debris, what's in the smoke. In that crowd, in that crowd running, I ran into a woman who, as I said before, was in Tower 2. She is still, she escaped, and she is here. Did it happen? Yes, I was in the building. Oh, my God, you were in the building? I was on the 92nd floor of number 2, and I didn't see the first plane crash, but I was on a lower floor when the second plane crashed into number 2. And my brother's a photojournalist, and he's down there now. I hope he's okay. How did you How did you get out? Like I walked down 92 floors, and I stopped on the 70-something floor because they said everything was okay, and the second plane crashed. Into the second building, right? Yeah. What happened? So it was the first tower one we hit first? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 
So at this point, obviously, everyone's trying to locate their family and friends as well as get themselves to safety. The area around here at City Hall is under lockdown. All the buildings are being evacuated. Everyone is being told to move north. Eileen LaPalmer, live for 1010 Winds outside of City Hall. Uh, we haven't heard yet from Mayor Giuliani, but I understand that uh, he does plan to uh, address us at some point. Eileen? Uh, yes, we are trying to locate where the mayor is. Obviously, uh, usually in the, when there is crisis situations, he would be down at the Office of Emergency Management, which is down at the World Trade Center. Um, we cannot find him right now. The city Hall is also evacuated and locked down, obviously for security reasons. We will let you know as soon as we know when the mayor will speak with us. Okay, as to all how all this happened, uh, it's becoming uh, increasingly apparent that this was a terrorist attack. President Bush as much as said so about an hour ago, what with uh, two planes in very short order crashing into the World Trade Center, both towers, and uh, the second uh, South Tower has now collapsed. In addition, a plane has apparently crashed near the Pentagon. There have been uh, threats. Obviously, all of these threats are credible today. Uh, the White House was evacuated, so to the Treasury, the Capitol, and uh, now we have a report that there has been an explosion near the U.S. Supreme Court in Washington, that according to Fox News. 1010 wins reporter Carol DiOria on Long Island, and uh, I don't imagine there's much traffic moving from uh, here to Manhattan this morning. No, I, I can't imagine how I would make it to uh, Manhattan today, but I have to tell you, you know, on Long Island, it's, it's so far removed. It's a peaceful, sunny day, and yet people are absolutely gripped by this. I just came over the Atlantic Beach Bridge, which is right on the Nassau County, Queens border, and as you go over the top of the bridge, you can see the smoke billowing from the World Trade Center. People have pulled over to the side of the road, uh, sitting on the railing of that bridge to take a look. I'm now on the Nassau Express which is Route 874, and uh, people have been pulling over their cars because um, as, each bri as, as the expressway has overpasses, you can see the smoke billowing. It's a, it's a grayish black on the edges that has turned white, and people are just pulling over to, to just take a look, and it's just so unbelievable. I, I stopped in a deli to buy the newspapers, and uh, a deli that is normally busy and buzzing with people, it was just a hush as, as people listened to the radio that was on in the deli. It is, I've made phone calls to people, and uh, people are just crying because of the, the sadness of this tragedy. It started out as a beautiful bright sunny day and in the matter of just a, a very few minutes uh, that was uh, shaken along with the sense that uh, New York is a secure place. Uh, just to bring you up to speed on the effects on infrastructure of this uh, episode, uh, all of the airports nationwide are shut down. There is no air traffic in the United States at least until 5 p.m. today. Also, the uh, Port Authority has closed down the Lincoln and Holland Tunnels and the George Washington Bridge. Uh, if you are a New York City firefighter, you are requested to report to your station immediately. We need all possible help at this time. You're listening to 1010 Winds, continuing live coverage of uh, this disaster that's unfolding this morning in New York City. And let's go to 1010 Winds reporter Lori Madden with an update on uh, the New York City tunnels. Lori? And we just got an update from Shadow Traffically that all of the tunnels into and out of the city, we know about the Port Authority tunnels, but on the East River as well, closed. That would be the Battery Tunnel, the Midtown Tunnel. We would assume those would be shut down. We've got the confirmation they are shut down. All of the bridges, the East River bridges also coming into the city. You cannot come into the city on the East River bridges, the Triborough Bridge the 59th Street Bridge, Williamsburg Bridge, the Manhattan Bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge. You cannot come into the city. The Tappan Zee Bridge is open, and that's the latest word from shadow traffic. Okay, if your plans involve uh, coming into Manhattan, your plan is to stay put right now. Already in Manhattan, he was getting ready to start what was to be a regular work day at the New York Stock Exchange. 1010 Winds reporter Larry Kofsky, he's been uh, telling us what's been going on from his vantage point. And Larry, where are you now? Well, Lee, I'm uh, on Lafayette Street. I've walked several blocks north. I know I'm north of uh, Canal Street, but I'm not exactly sure uh, how far. I walked into a store and they were kind enough to let me use the phone. As uh, you may or may not know, many uh, the, the cell phones are almost impossible to use this morning. Uh, I was standing at the corner of uh, Park Row, and I believe it was Fulton Street when we heard this uh, massive um, explosion and uh, the top of number two World Trade Center came down. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what happened, but uh, there was certainly a, a cloud of smoke and a, a stampede of people getting out of the way and uh 
Police uh, first telling everybody to get into the subway that the trains were running and then uh, immediately shooing us out again. And basically, as I uh, look out the front door of the store that I'm sitting in here, trying to catch my breath, um, there are just uh, hordes of people just uh, basically walking north trying to get out of the way. I see a woman coming in now. She's uh, crying. I have no idea uh, what her problem is. She doesn't appear to be injured. I think she may just be shaken up. But uh, certainly, uh, you mentioned normal work day. I don't think there are going to be any normal work days uh, in this part of Manhattan for a very long time. Lee? All right, Larry. Speaking of the subways, 1010 Winds reporter Mona Rivera has been checking out uh, the mass transit situation. Mona? New Yorkers who are hearing the word terrorist attack are angry and they're afraid. I spoke with Sonia Warner. She was taking the A train into Manhattan from Brooklyn, and she got off in fear. They're going to um, attack the, the subway station next. If they, if they um, bomb the Pentagon and then the World Trade Center right here in New York City. The subway station is, could be next. We don't know. But I decided to get off just to save God myself. She said an announcement was made stopping many trains from going into Manhattan, and no one was going to work today. Mona Rivera, 1010 Winds in Brooklyn. Winds News Time, 1022. Let's get caught up to speed on this situation, which affects not only New York City, but the nation. Let's go live to 1010 Winds newsman James Parody. James? All right, Lee, with well, a big word in Washington uh, concerns this apparent plane crashing into or near the Pentagon, uh, causing a huge fireball and a scene that is eerily reminiscent of what we saw at the World Trade Center. Thick black smoke now emanating from the Pentagon. Jim Angle of the Fox News Channel is on the scene. As you come into Washington from Virginia, about two miles from the Pentagon, you can see the smoke billowing up from the building. Huge clouds of smoke. So much so that uh, commuters coming into town have pulled over to the side of a busy freeway, what is ordinarily a busy freeway, and are sitting watching in amazement as the symbol of the United States defense establishment uh, goes up in smoke. All highways in and around Washington, D.C. are now jammed with traffic, as, of course, are the highways in the New York area. Lower Manhattan virtually closed off. At the White House, along with many other federal buildings in Washington, an evacuation underway as a precaution. Again, Fox News man Jim Angle. The roads around the White House, the streets around the White House, were blocked seconds ago. Uh, members of the Uniformed Division of the Secret Service ran out to intersections and started diverting traffic. There are emergency vehicles on almost every block around the White House. The road south of the White House has also been blocked. And as you know, the White House is being evacuated. Federal employees are standing on the street corners in and around the White House, uh, having left the building for fear of another attack. Among the explosions in Washington this morning, one near the Supreme Court building, as we hear from Fox Channel newsman Brian Wilson. I was just here in front of the Capitol, which, by the way, has been evacuated, and back toward the Supreme Court area, we just heard a low, muffled thud. It sounded like a small explosion. Sirens are going off around this city like you cannot believe, and just overhead a moment ago, something I have never seen in Washington in the 16 years I've been here, military jets are, uh, are now patrolling the skies over Washington, D.C. 1010 Winds coverage continues with Judy DeAngelis. Thank you, James. Uh, we are just getting word now that uh, not only is the airspace locked, but below ground is also being uh, closed tighter than a drum. We're going to go over to uh, shadow traffic uh, reporter Pete Torriello for the latest on that, Pete. Right, Judy. Uh, apparently the entire New York City subway system has been shut down now, so we have a lockdown above ground, as you said, and below ground as well. Lincoln Holland Tunnels, George Washington Bridge are all closed. The Tappan Zee Bridge is open at this time. East River Bridge is and tunnels in and out of uh, Manhattan are also shut down at this time, as is all of the uh, airport activity nationwide. And uh, once again, to repeat the word uh, from the Transit Authority, all subway service has now been shut down, and we'll have more as it becomes available, Judy. Thank you, uh, Pete Torriello. A shadow traffic, as you heard, all... Uh, subway traffic closed down. All the Port Authority bridges and tunnels closed down. Nothing's taking off. All the airports are closed down. The roads are closed down. The twin disaster at the World Trade Center happening shortly before 9 a.m., then right around 9 a.m., and then just a little while ago, a third explosion, which actually brought down the South Tower. 1010 Winds reporter Juliet Papa is uh, down around City Hall. Let's try and get through to her now and see what's happening down there. Juliet.
Judy, I am at the intersection of Broadway and Chambers Street, where it looks as if police are trying to virtually evacuate the whole lower Manhattan area. When I saw the smoke resulting from the crash of the towers going down, people were running up the block. They were running up Broadway. They were running up, I was on 7th Avenue South, running in a panic of northbound from the area. I had been trying to get down here in a car. I was on 7th Avenue South going over to Broadway. And as I heard a Joan Fleischer on our broadcast live saying that the towers collapsed, I saw the billow of smoke that resulted from that. People with fear stricken all over their faces just running up the block. Right now it appears as if I said that the entire area is being evacuated. Uh, there are police walking around uh, just directing people, citizens that are walking around directing traffic and directing people out. More emergency vehicles are on their way down here. You might hear the sirens as I speak. They are just continuing to go. I spoke with EMS a while ago. I managed to get through to them, and they said, don't even think about trying to get a tally on uh, injured or fatalities. And that was uh, about uh, 45 minutes ago before the towers went down. So we cannot even begin to guess uh, what havoc this has wreaked. But as I said, it appears that all of this is being evacuated. I am being asked to get off this phone right now, and police are just trying to clear the whole area. Juliet Papa, 1010 Winds, reporting live from Chambers and Broadway. And we are just now receiving word that all international flights to Washington, D.C. and New York City are being diverted to Canadian airports. Air uh, lockdown in the airspace across the entire United States and of course here in the city, nothing is going in or going out. 1010 Winds News Director Ben Meverack is at the Manhattan Bridge. Let's check in with him. Ben. Hey Judy, I have a direct line of sight to what is left of the World Trade Center. The fire continues to burn. I can see the flames through the thick smoke. As I walk through Brooklyn to get to this position, I can tell you as uh, Julietta alluded to. The bridges have pretty much been blocked off. Everyone is being diverted. Uh, there is just no way into the city except for emergency vehicles. I did pass through a couple of parks and on some of the streets and before when I reported about an hour ago there were people at their gas pumps who turned to look at the smoke that was coming from the city. Folks stepping out of bodegas and stores to look. Now people are gathering in large groups. In fact, in one corner I saw a group of people actually holding hands and praying. As I stand on the uh, Manhattan Bridge, which is closed, it is open to pedestrian traffic. Uh, some people are walking across, but there's just no way for them to, uh, as I look out, something is, I can't, it looks as though the building is going, is that the building going down? Is that the second building of the World Trade Center going yes, down? Yes, that is the second, that I is the second tower. Just, that is the second tower. Down. It's a huge plume of smoke that came out of the middle of the building, and then the building just disappeared in the smoke. It is an incredible sight. People around me are taking a look. It is, I cannot even describe it. It is, it is one of those rare moments where you just can't describe it. It looked as though it was a puff of cloud, uh, almost like a firework explosion of cloud. No noise with it. And then all of a sudden, I, I just blinked my eyes. I looked back at it. You might have heard the people in the background going, oh, my God. And the second building appears to have gone down. Yes, Three. you're absolutely right, Ben. That is this, the second uh, building that has gone down. It, it came out like a plume of smoke, like a banana unpeeling. Plumes of smoke coming out and then absolutely nothing. And now where there were two huge buildings, two huge towers, there is now nothing but plumes of smoke. Can you still see where you're looking at, Ben? All I see now is the clouds are beginning to drift away, and in its place, a, a, a bit of the clear sky behind it, and it, it is a remarkable the lifelong New York, you know, when you come into the city and you look around the panoramic view, you see the Empire State Building, you see the Chrysler Building, and then you pan down to the south of Manhattan, and you always expect to see the World Trade Center towers there. It's just, it just it's habit. You just expect to see it. Now to look there, to see it vacant, except for a cloud of smoke, uh, it is just incredible. Well, Ben, what we're going to...